Hi everyone. Hey, everybody hates epoxy, right? Nobody likes to grout epoxy. And a lot of times if you have problems with it, you just, just dread whenever you get a job or a project that has epoxy. Well, let's see if we can take some of the dread away. It's still epoxy, but it doesn't always have to be a negative experience. So number one, as you start with epoxy, yeah, this is critical get the follow the instructions right so they tell you how to mix you don't start half mixing batches being a chemist on the job site mix it right follow the directions in this how many rpms how long to mix how much of the product to put together so this one in a small unit like this is all of unit b into product a and you mix it up properly for the uh, this one calls for about a minute worth of mixing time so we do that another thing it says for us to do is these have micro pores in it. So it says take a damp sponge ahead of time just to get the dust off the surface and fill any of these micro pores with a little bit of moisture. It'll make the cleanup easier. So I wanna make sure we're clean. Same thing here, even a mosaic tile like this, wanna make sure we're clean. If, you're, if you've ever grouted epoxy or even regular grout and you've left the floor dirty before you've grouted, you notice as you start smearing, the more and more you smear, the stiffer and stiffer the grout gets because it's picking up that dirt and it sets up on the face. So we don't want to do that. So we've done that. We've wiped the surface. We followed the instructions while mixing. We're good there. So once you have your epoxy mixed, don't just leave it sitting in the bucket. It's a thermal plastic material or a thermal controlled material. If you leave it in a mass like this, it generates heat. As it generates heat, it sets up faster and faster. Not the best thing because then it's going to be too stiff by the time you're to the end of the bucket. So what they recommend doing is taking it out and putting it in to small piles so that you can then use that and spread so that it won't be heating up. So if you get it out of your bucket, put it into small piles so you can spread the grout without it heating up on you. Now, if we take a look over here, I want to show one thing before I cover everything up that I've done. Right here, this joint. So this is an expansion joint. If you notice, I have two layers of backer rod packed in this joint. By doing that, when I spread my epoxy over the top, once I'm done, I can peel the top one off, ready for the expansion joint or movement joint, and the bottom one's already in place. It keeps the epoxy out of the joint. We have a whole host of grout floats we can use. There's this new silicone or gum or silicone float really worked well on a lot of grouts. Here's a really stiff one. A lot of the commercial grades like Fernanes, uh, uh, vinyl esters, things like that, sometimes they can be very stiff, hard to trial. So you'll need a really stiff float to get it packed in the joint. Here's another one, not quite as stiff, a Marshalltown float, also great. We're looking to make sure whatever float we use, we can get it packed into the joint, fill that joint 100%. But also, what does the finish of the joint look like when we're done? So we try different floats. So for today, I'm gonna to just start with just our basic regular gum rubber float that we've probably used for many years. So uh, number one, we wanna make sure we get it packed in the joint. So just work the epoxy, 45, just get those packed into the joint really nice. This one seems to be packing it in really nice, nice full joints. So once you get it packed in, they're really good. How do you know when it's packed in? If you look up real close, if you pack it in there good, it should actually bubble up out of the joint a little bit like that if you're pushed all the way down to the bottom. That's the nice thing with some of these newer epoxies, so much nicer. This hand is so tired from spreading the older stiff epoxy, just not a very fun product. So this, and what we're looking to do is hold it at a 90 degree angle. And if we could do something like this when we're done, if our, if our tile looks that nice and clean when we're done, it cleanup is going to be a breeze. So one, don't make a mess that you have to clean up. So if you're making a mess, leaving too much epoxy behind, get your joints perfect. The less work you have to do to, to make your joints look perfect, the less washing you're gonna to have to do, the less you're playing around with the epoxy, and you'll have a better looking job when you're finished. So take a look, make sure your joints are just about exactly perfect. If there's any pinholes, re-float over the top of them. Again, just to make sure they're nice and full.